Okay, this section is about cyclic compounds. So in a cyclic compound, what we do is we take a regular alkane. So here is one, two, three, four, five, five carbon pentane. The black ones are carbons, the yellow ones are hydrogens. If we want to make it cyclic, we have to turn into a ring structure. So what we do is these, the molecule can rotate, and that's just like a real molecule. Real molecule can rotate around single bonds. So if I want to turn this thing into a ring, I first need to rotate it around like this to bring the end carbons close together, but then I also need to free up a bonding capacity in these end carbons so that they can bond to each other. And in order to do that, I have to take off two hydrogens because their bonding capacities are full. They can make four bonds, and that's how many that they've made. So if I pull off these two hydrogens, I can replace them with a carbon-carbon bond here. And what I've made then is a cyclic compound. So it still has five carbons, one, two, three, four, five. But now instead of being in a straight line, they're in a ring. So this would be, instead of being called pentane, it would be called cyclopentane. And you'll also notice that the general formula will change because in a straight chain alkane, you would have twice the number of hydrogens plus an extra two for the terminal carbons. We don't have terminal carbons anymore. So my hydrogens here will be twice the number as the number of carbons, and that's it, because I had to take off those two hydrogens in order to build this thing into a ring. So let's take a look at our notes then and see um, what cyclic compounds are going to be all about. So cyclic compounds, like we said, they have the structure of a closed ring, and because they're a closed ring, we have to put them together. The general formula then if I have n carbons, will be to have H2n. I've got twice the number of hydrogens relative to my number of carbons in order to join them together. So if I have all single carbon-carbon bonds like I did before, then instead of having an alkane, I have what's called a cycloalkane. And I identify that with the prefix cyclo in front of the parent chain name. So here would be cyclopropane, which is the smallest cyclic compound that you can make. It's got three carbons arranged into a ring. This would be a molecular structure type of view. This would be a condensed structural view, and this would be a line diagram. So it just looks like a triangle. And if we were doing a line diagram for the molecule that we made, then it would have, it would basically look like a pentagon, right? Because that's what it is. It's five carbons arranged with equal angles in between each other, and that shape would be a pentagon. So if we wanted to make cyclohexane here, I look first at my parent chain, it's a hexane backbone, and that means I'm gonna have to have six carbons. The structural diagram for this guy is going to have six carbons then. So you think, okay, if I have six sides on a shape, well, that makes a hexagon. So you're drawing a hexagon putting our six carbons um, in a row like this, or in a ring like this. And then if this is a structural view, I'm drawing the hydrogens separate. So each carbon already has two bonds, so it's going to have two hydrogens like so. So we can arrange them around on the carbons. And it will follow the general formula because if I have six carbons then, that will give me 12 hydrogens, and that can be a way for me to check to make sure that I've done things right. Now for the condensed structural, my carbons would go in a ring again, but each carbon has got two hydrogens. So I'll be putting them as little CH2 units. And if I'm doing a line diagram, this is nice and easy. I am just drawing a hexagon. So that would be the line diagram then for cyclohexane. So condensed structural, structural, and the line diagrams. Okay, and then if I want to go backwards, so what is this thing that I have? So it is a cyclic hydrocarbon because I see it's got a ring shape here, right? Here's a five-membered ring, here's a five-membered ring, and this is the same molecule just shown as a line diagram. 
condensed structural and the structural. You can see the structural starts to get a little bit crowded. So when I'm naming this guy, <clears throat> with a cyclic compound, you can start numbering around the ring. The ring is going to be like the backbone, or like the parent chain. But you have to start numbering at one of the branches and then number towards the next branch. So I could start at this methyl group here. One, two, three, four, five. That would be fine. I could have also numbered it one, oops, I could have also numbered it starting at the other branch, going towards two, three, four, five, going towards this carbon. You'll see that we'll actually get the same molecule name, regardless of which way we do it. So the backbone name isn't just going to be pentane. It's got five carbons. It's going to be cyclopentane. That's my cyclopentane backbone. It's got one methyl, two methyls, so it's dimethyl, one comma two, dimethyl cyclopentane. One comma two, dimethyl cyclopentane. All lowercase, no spaces in the dimethyl cyclopentane. And if we had numbered it with the red numbering here, we would have also ended up with one comma two dimethyl cyclopentane. So the name would have been the same. Okay, so anytime you're, you have to decide how to number, start with one of the branches and number towards the next branch.